Okay. Welcome to our remote information session for the School of Fashion in the College of the Arts at Kent State University. I'm Leanne Starlin Nelson, the Director of Recruitment and Retention for the College, and I want to welcome you to this afternoon session. This is a half hour information session that will focus on the New York City studio. And so today we have joining us Ann Walter, who's the director for the New York City studio. We're so excited that she's here with us. And just a few housekeeping things. If you need closed captioning, there's a toolbar on the bottom of the team screen where you can click on the three little dots and add closed captioning to your session. And you're also welcome to submit questions in the chat box. So also on that toolbar, there's a little word cloud. If you click on that, you can submit questions to the chat box. Anne has a bit of a presentation she's going to share with us. And then when we're finished, because we're a smaller group, we can uh, definitely open this up for questions. So you can learn a little bit more. And I'll turn it over to Anne. Great, thanks Leanne. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a little note that says only meeting organizers and presenters can share. Can you change my permissions to present? I will definitely try. Or I can email it to you, whatever you prefer. Why don't you email it to me just in case? All right, it, give me one second there. Sure. Uh, that's strange. I've never had that happen before in Teams, actually. I haven't either. Um, let's see. Okay, just. Okay, I just sent it to you. Great. Um, so in the meantime, as Leanne said, I'm Ann Walter. I'm the director of the Study Away program location in New York City. So if you've been to any of our other sessions, which I think maybe Abigail, you have, um, the School of Fashion requires that students participate in a study away or a study abroad experience. Um, New York City Study Away is one of our biggest and most popular programs. Um, our space in New York is considered Kent State University campus. Uh, I work for Kent State University um, and I have a little presentation to tell you a bit about or show you a bit about what the studio experience is about. Awesome, I just got it in. Perfect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, can you see it? Um, no, I cannot. Okay. Can anybody else see the presentation? No, I can't. I cannot. Okay. We'll keep working on this then. We've all really had to increase our technology skills in the last. <laughs> we have week. very quickly. <laughs> and for this week, for some reason, I keep running into quite the issues that I haven't had there yet. There we go. You see it? Um, I see your <laughs> outlook. Well, that's no good. Oh, you know what? It's telling me request control. Would I, if I do that, can oh, that? Yeah, I... try that. Okay. Well, no, I think that must. That's, just all... a... oh. that's letting me do something on your screen. <laughs> it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hold on just a second here. I think I just took back control. Okay. 
Okay, let me try this one more time. There we go. Yay. Okay. Um, awesome. So do you mind tabbing or should I request control again just to scroll through? I can scroll for, for you. That's perfect. So this is just a kind of a short presentation with some great pictures to show you a little bit about what the experience is like um, for our students who choose to study away in New York. So that first picture is from one of our classes when we had a photo shoot and that's a bunch of our students and some models and some photographers. Um, then this next one we can just skip. If you're interested, there's a great video on our website and it shows kind of um, students kind of a day in the life going to classes, etc which you can definitely go take a look at. It's on the New York City Studio website of the Fashion School. And then the next slide, just kind of a little bit about, you know, why pick to the New York City Studio? We have nine choices of, of amazing locations that you can study away at. Um, and if you're thinking about what's right for you and why you might choose New York, obviously New York City is a large city. It's the heart of the fashion industry. And because of that, you have access to the fashion industry because we have a lot of relationships with our own alumni who now work in the industry, with people who work in the industry. We have a lot of special events and activities for our students when they're here that they get to do when they're in New York. Um, a lot of social networking events with alumni. We offer a few special classes that you can only take in New York. And then, of course, there are internships and we have our faculty who currently still work in the industry. So it's a really strong connection to the industry and the alumni. On our next slide, um, this is a, a little bit more about location. So the picture on the left where you can see the taxis, that is taken out of our window. So you are in the heart of the middle of the garment district. You walk out on the street and you might be interning there. You might be picking up a button for your internship, et cetera. And then the picture on the right is sort of what a, a view from the very top of our building might look like. And again, you're right in the heart of Manhattan. Um, moving on to the next slide, uh, access to the fashion industry. One of the things we do is have guest lectures. So this was, I believe last fall, this is Todd Snyder. He is a really well-known menswear designer. He was GQ Magazine's um, menswear designer of his generation. So he came in and he gave a guest lecture to um, a bunch of our students. And he's someone that I used to work with when I was a designer at The Gap. So I like to call up my friends and ask them to come in and talk to our students. Um, on our next slide, again, access to the fashion industry. We have a lot of different recruiting events for both internships and full-time jobs. So this is a session where there's a recruiter. I believe this one was from Lee and Fung. And they come in and they chat with the students about opportunities they have coming up. Uh, and it kind of just gives the students um, insider in, insights and how to apply and a great way for them to maybe meet the person who could potentially be interviewing them for an internship. Um, moving on to our next slide. Uh, one of the um, events and series we have put on is a fashion diversity series. Uh, in the New York studio, we care a lot about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we run industry panels where we bring in leaders from the industry um, to talk about different things that are real world topics. So the picture here is from a women of color in leadership panel. And on that panel, we have different women who work in leadership roles at, at companies such as Bergdorf Goodman or Calvin Klein. Um, we've had panels about LGBTQ plus inclusion, body positivity. Um, and we had one that we had to reschedule for the, this summer about different abilities um, for adaptive fashion. So another way to connect um, students with what's going on in the real world of the industry. Um, the next slide talks about another thing that we offer to our students. And again, all these things I'm chatting about are actually free. So they are included within, within your experience in New York. There's no additional cost. We offer workshops, which is just a small, short class, usually taught by an alumni to give you extra skills. So we've had LinkedIn workshops. We've had negotiation workshops to learn how to negotiate with your buyer or how to negotiate the rent in your first apartment. We've had styling workshops. So all different kind of fun workshops that students can participate in after um, at the end of the day. On our next slide, again, alumni. So every semester we offer some sort of alumni networking event. This one was a mentorship program where we paired students up with an alumni 
And then they could spend their whole semester interacting with that alumni, perhaps meeting them for coffee, getting a tour of their office, but really building a meaningful relationship with someone in the industry, but who also really understands the Kent State student experience. So it's just a great way to kind of build your real world network while you're still in school. And we kind of set that all up for you, pair you up with them. Uh, our coursework is designed to keep you on track with wh what you would be taking on main campus. The difference is that you take it in New York, so you're being exposed to industry critiques or your instructors are still coming from their full-time job as design director. Um, we offer both junior and senior merchandising and design courses. A lot of our students like to study there in New York in their senior year, so then they can just stay in New York, stay in their apartment and move right into the real world. And then on the next slide, we have a class in New York called Study Tour, which is basically just this super fancy, amazing field trip class where every week you go to this field trip. So we have students, um, you can see in the bottom right, they went to the Vessel when it first opened because the Vessel is part of a very large retail complex called Hudson Yards. Um, they go to see pattern makers on the left. They went, the two students in the center middle one picture are at a footwear trade show. So really you go on these great field trips, you get tours, you get to go inside corporate offices and showrooms, behind the scenes, meet people working in their jobs. So that is a mandatory class and every single student goes on one of these trips every single week they're in New York, which is great. Mm -hmm. On our next slide, we have, for our design students, we have design critiques, but these critiques aren't just with your instructor. We get uh, industry folks, alumni, designers, tech designers working and we ask them to come over for an hour when they have a break from their lunch or in the morning and we have them critique the student work and give them real feedback on what they've been designing and what they've been developing. On our next slide, we just started this really great course, visual merchandising. So visual merchandising obviously is how you set up the store, the windows, the displays, how you lay out the tables, how you make the product special, how you entice the consumer to buy it. So in New York, the city is the classroom so the students are out and about a lot working on projects developing ideas and then they they create their own kind of prototype store set both physical and using um computer software as part of this class so this is a really fun new class that we just started running this year on our next slide we also offer a course called fashion image which we teach in collaboration with another school in new york it's called new york film academy so our students do the garments and the styling and creating the concept. And then the New York Film Academy photography students do the lighting and the set design and the photography. And we come together and we create imagery like you can see on the right and at the bottom. Um, and we, we source models. You can see that one on the right was on the roof deck of a hotel, the girl that's in the bridal gown. So again, a really collaborative, interesting class where you utilize the city as part of the actual classroom. And then this slide is just kind of a reminder of where your instructors have worked or are currently working. Um, one of our instructors right now is a full-time design director at Ralph Lauren. Um, one of our instructors worked at Yves Saint Laurent. Um, some of our instructors have recently worked at um, Calvin Klein. So just the, again, that you're getting that insider connection to people who come from a more professional background, which is a really nice balance to the experience you get on main campus. On our next slide, we just have a couple little pictures of students after internships last year. So obviously New York students tend to do an internship when they're here because of course, there's so much to choose from and the sky is the limit. Um, students go anywhere from a glamorous Oscar de la Renta, Christian Siriano. We've had students find their own internships at um, Dylan's Candy Bar or soul cycle or anywhere they want they they find it and they tend to have a really amazing hands-on experience where they're doing real work um, this is a list of where our students have interned as you can see the name is the names are endless um, you can also find these lists on our website as well internships can often lead into full-time jobs which is another exciting thing about interning and then staying in new york um, and then scrolling on down we can skip this one Thanks. Um, this just talks a little bit about the program costs. Um, we always recommend that students are aware that New York is an expensive place. So to budget, think about how much they might spend on food, how much they plan to spend on 
clothing or travel. And then of course there are definitely scholarships available that can be looked at in depth on the website. Um, and just to kind of check and plan and be aware about the cost of living in New York, because it's probably maybe 25% more than living in Ohio. Housing in New York is always a big question. Our students are currently responsible for securing their own housing. Now that is not as scary as it sounds. If you visit our website, we have a whole list of different housing providers that we have already kind of vetted and checked to make sure that they're safe, that the location is good. We also get feedback every semester from our students about where they stayed and what the experience was like. Um, and again, you can find housing that's less than the 1350 listed on here, but it depends. Will you have a roommate? What's your commute like? There's all kinds of different things to consider in New York City with housing. Uh, which we totally work with you on. We're happy to chat with you or your families about and just give you more information about the different providers. On the next slide is just a, a few pictures of the most popular neighborhoods with our students. Um, they really range from being in Brooklyn, like we see here for Bushwick and Brooklyn Heights, um, in Manhattan, so Midtown, Hell's Kitchen, Chelsea, and then Queens has gotten really popular. A lot of young people live in Astoria because it's super close to the city and still very affordable and cute. And then on our last side is just an invitation to visit us. So if you're ever in New York City in the future, when things are a little, little more back to normal, um, email us, call us, come have a tour. We welcome tours from students, potential students, families. And then we have um, an Instagram that we're pretty active on, kent.nycstudio. So we'd love to have anyone who wants to follow us. And that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I do have a question. Um, when you go to the New York studio, um, are you there for just the fall semester or are you there for the entire year? Great question. And I totally did not answer that. So um, you have the choice. You can come in the fall or spring, and those are both 15 week semesters. You can also come in the summer and that is an eight week semester. We only offer senior coursework in the fall semester. So if you were doing senior work there, it's the fall. Juniors can do fall, spring, or summer. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for all that information, Anne. Um, one of the things I have heard that you do that I think is really helpful for our students is I believe that you all do an orientation once students arrive. We sure do. A little bit about that so it doesn't seem it's not so so scary you get an orientation and a welcome <laughs> we do we do i mean we cram a lot of information into that orientation um we kind of do two orientations actually land so if you decide that you're going to study away and you pick new york about um four months before you arrive you'll go to an orientation session on campus and that's with me so i'll come to campus and I spend some time with the group of students and that typically is attended heavily by parents. So parents will come and ask a lot of questions. Um, so we talk a lot then. We talk a lot then about housing because that's around the time when students start to pick their housing. Um, then, and that happens on campus. Then the day of the first day of class or the day before class, depending on the semester, we meet with the students and they come into the studio. And so we have an official orientation and we go over to you, what you said, everything with them. We talk about, um, all the details around the studio because the studio, well, it's part of Kent State University. We're in New York City. We're in an office building in the middle of the garment district. So it's different. It's not like a big green campus in Ohio. So we have to tell the students how to get into the building. Every student gets their own private security code. So it's very safe. Um, and all the logistics and details, like where is the subway? And if you have any questions and we give them all of our contact information so that they are really supported when they're there in terms of having um, kind of someone they can reach out to if they need anything. So we do have a very robust orientation session with them. And because it's typically a group of under 70 students, we really take care to sort of get to know them um, so that we can keep track of them. Oh, hey, Leanne, you know, I, you were sick last week. How are you doing when we see them in the, the studio? Because the studio, again, is much different than main campus. It's a smaller space. We only have four classrooms. So we really try to get to know our students when they're in New York for the semester. I think that's great and provides a lot of peace of mind as students are transitioning in and getting used to it. Um, Therese, do you have any questions? I do. I have two. How many students are um, admitted 
like in this, in, you know, for the semester? You know, it really varies. I would say on average in the fall, we will have between 50 to 70. Um, we just launched our senior program. So in for seniors, it can be anywhere from 10 to 20. And then juniors could be 35 to 55. Um, we, in New York, we're not really limited. We don't have a huge upper limit. We have a classroom that might have 20 computers, but if we had the need, we could make two sections of a class. So we have the physical space to accommodate um, as many students as are interested. In the summer, we typically have less students. It's a smaller program and we don't offer design coursework in the summer. So in the summer, we usually have between 30 and 50. So that, and that um, is a great point for me just to mention that class size because of that is much smaller than in main campus, which is another great way that you really get to interact with your instructors. I mean, we know you and I will ask you how you are, but your instructor will know where you intern, what, where you work, who's your roommate and how long your commute is. And so you really get to engage with your instructor on a very personal level because none of our classes are bigger than 20 and most of them are around 15. So it's a great chance to kind of get more attention. The other question I had is, um, when I think of New York City as opposed to going abroad, I, am I correct in saying that it's more affordable for the student? Or is that not the case? Because I'm thinking my kids, you know, for them to be able to afford to go to, you know, Paris or, or places like that, is, to, in my head, I think that it's more expensive. Is that the case? I, you know, I think the answer to me, and Leanne may actually have more information here, the answer to me is it depends. I mean, I have lived in New York for 20 years. I worked for a long time in design before I moved into higher education. It depends. New York can be incredibly expensive or it can be incredibly cheap. I mean, I lived in New York when I was 22 and I had half a bagel for breakfast and the other half for dinner. You know, you can make it work in New York if you have to. Um, so I think it really depends on what the student is looking for, where they want to live, what kind of housing is, is okay for them and their family. I think to me, it's less about the cost of New York versus Florence or Hong Kong, but more what are you looking for? Because yeah. different students want different experiences. And I always tell students, if you can afford to do two, do two, because they're so different. The New York experience, it can be real and gritty. You're going to run out and get coffee for Anna Sui, and then you're going to have to run do like unpack samples and and it's the real world and you are getting a new york job experience if you go to florence you're growing as a person if you go to new york you're growing as a professional um mm -hmm. so they're really valuable in different ways but new york is it can be quite expensive mm -hmm. yeah and i think it, it depends on length of time too which is one of the reasons we have the study tours now which is the the la trip and the germany trip that are more short term yeah um, yeah yeah for sure so, but it's a great, it's a great question for sure. So, and the feedback I hear from students both ways and all experiences that they're wonderful and valuable, they're just very different. So, and then too, we have a lot of students who come in from the Midwest too, that think they want to live in New York City and one semester in New York is enough for them to either love it or change their mind. So, right. That's helpful too. For and it's some. a great way to find out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do you all have any more questions? Those are the two I had. And I have one. I was thinking about in terms of student planning what semester. Do you find that students will find an internship and then pick the semester that they're gone so they'll align it with the internship? Or do they say, I'm going in the fall and I'm going to find you an know, opportunity? Or is it a little you bit? You have to kind of pick the semester you're going first because internships don't come up that far in advance. Okay. Internships typically only get posted two or three months in advance. Now, that's not totally accurate because larger corporate internships, like if you were going to do a Victoria's Secret Pink internship or an internship with Ross Stores, those will get posted in like December for summer. But most internships, the bulk of them, 80% of them, don't get posted till March or April for the summer semester. And you would have had to make your decision by December on which location you were going to study away for. Um, that being said, um, the internship op options and support system we have through Hillary Stone and Millie Ott, 
that there it's totally possible to get an internship. You just have to be, you have to work a little closer because companies are working closer to need as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that's a great question. Okay. okay. And then when you're, we're talking about internships, the number of hours a week that a student will be working in one of those positions, I'm guessing varies depending on the employer or is it a minimum? I believe, and again, Hillary is the expert here, but I believe there's a requirement if you're taking an internship for credit that you have to hit a threshold of approximately 220 hours a semester, I believe, don't quote me. And if you were here for 15 weeks, it's totally doable. You can intern 15 or 20 hours a week. Mm-hmm. Honestly, companies would be like, hey, Leanne, can you come in for extra? And we always encourage the students to be able to find that balance to say, you know, my course is a priority, so I can only commit to the 20 hours that we talked about at the beginning of the semester. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a great op- example of when students come in to see me. They come in and they say, I'm having this problem at my internship. How can I tell them I can't come in longer? Um, when they're there in the summer, they tend to want to work more hours a week because they're only there for eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, so it really depends, but it's totally manageable, but the internship sometimes will say, oh, can you come in on the weekend? It's fashion week. And then the student might choose to do that because they, they want to go to fashion week. They want to be a backstage dresser at a fashion show. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, any last questions, Abigail or Therese? Um, I have a question. So if you go like for the, um, in the summer for eight weeks, is that, like sufficient um enough like compared to the 15 week one in the fall that is also a really good question i would say yes because a couple reasons you still take the class itself will still be the same it's just in a shorter more intense format so you still get all the same learning experience um but your classes are a little longer so you might meet for five hours versus three hours because you only meet once a week for eight weeks um so the learning experience is the same And the internship, just like I mentioned before, is you'll work more hours per week versus less hours per week. Um, We still offer very similar programming over the summer, like we'll do an alumni event, we'll do um, a panel or workshops. Um, And honestly, I actually think coming in the summer is nice because New York is a walking town. You walk everywhere, you take the subway, you're outside, and there's nothing in the world like New York in the summer to me. So there could be there can be perks to coming in the summer versus coming in January and February when it's snowy and you're walking through a slush to get to the subway. <laughs> but it really depends on how you plan out your classes and what's right for you. Um. So, let's have one more question. Um, with the summer, um, if you go in the summer, is that satisfy? the study abroad requirement? It would, yeah, because the requirement is study abroad or study away, so it would. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, absolutely. Well, one thing about summer I just thought of is it can be a little cheaper also because you would only need an apartment for like the eight weeks of the program. So that would be a way to look at it as a slightly cheaper option versus because in the fall and spring semester you you basically need four months because it's a 15 or 16 week semester so that ends up being four four months of housing yeah so you have a little bit of extra time on the front end when you get there and you might need a little extra on the end when you leave depending on how dates and stuff align right well that wraps up our time together today and thank you so much for sharing all of that i'm sure they learned something i know i did and we appreciate you being here with us this will be up on our website next week and you know if you have other questions stuff and let us know thank you for joining us all right thanks, thanks you guys, guys. have You're a good welcome. weekend bye bye